Welcome back to the New Earth Business Podcast. I am here with Alex Welch, who is an incredible soul sister who's burst into my life from nowhere. And I am so, so grateful for our connection. So let's introduce you. I have taken part of this from your website and then part of it I'm collaborating myself please channel it out (laughs) (laughs) yeah so Alex is a creative powerhouse I thought that was a really good word to describe you because everything about you is um yeah it feels like you're you're a channeling force of creativity you're an artist a mystic a healer and a master builder now you launched your first venture in sustainable agriculture at the age of 19 and you've since worked with a variety of different startup founders to help and build and nurture communities on and offline something that I've always been interested in myself so Alex is passionate about sustainability entrepreneurship technology nature design spending the past four years working in the AG food tech space now you're gonna have to give us a deepening on that not not quite yet though um you are literally the perfect perfect candidate for this podcast I'm as I'm speaking I'm just sharing the new earth business values right here Mm. so it says here that you join your first urban farming startup impact farm in 2016 while studying at IE University in Madrid Impact Farm was created to provide refugees and underserved communities with affordable vertical farms and a marketplace for their surplus product. Another incredible, like, bomb of um, (laughs) service, feels like the word. This, like, service is really coming through here a lot. And so Mm -hmm. from there, Alex went on to participate and present at numerous competitions and accelerators, including... Thought for Food Summit, Halt Prize, Fast Forward, and Halt Founders Lab. Now, what it didn't say on your website was that you are a dancer, a musician, a songstress, yeah. <laughs> a poet, a writer, like just a uh, pure open channel um, who has captivated my heart and my mind. We connected through uh good friend of ours Rosa Rosa's been on this podcast she is a sexual liberation coach and incredible human to be around she's somebody when I'm in her presence she just makes she just makes me happy being in that woman's presence and obviously keeping friends like that you always keep more friends like that and so we're we have pulled together in this sacred circle on this sacred sacred podcast today to find out more about you to find out more about your your mission what drives you what what gets you out of bed in the morning and um and yeah why 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 you're here why why you're showing up in the way the way that you do so I'd love I feel like I've just given our audience a little bit about where you've been now I'd love to know where you're where you're at now so this Mm. is where you've been where are you now and who are you becoming oh my god that's wow what a good juicy place to start (laughs) just want to thank you for that introduction it's sometimes so bizarre to me to like reflect on my past and where I've been and um It's so perfectly timed because we just went into the new moon in Aquarius and my moon is in Aquarius and everyone's talking about this age of Aquarius. And I think when I think about where I am and what I am becoming, this Aquarius side of me is so strong. When you talk about all these different parts of being a creative and being a poet and being a dancer, that very much was my childhood. I was always so creative and I was always a musical theater person and on stage and loved playing and dancing. And then I kind of went into business and tech. And now I found myself in this place of becoming. So I really am in this place of being and becoming and asking myself this question of how can I be of service? 
And the Aquarius moon that lives inside of me is so passionate about effective altruism, which I think is what got me into entrepreneurship because I didn't get into food because I grew up on a farm or I knew anything about food at all. It was really me trying to solve my own problems. I was experiencing a lot of issues with my health. And so I got into the food space and now I've overcome those issues and overcome those challenges. And I'm in a completely new stage of my life. And I'm at this place of really deep listening. And of course, right now, my my services is holding space for people to find out what is their why and allow their why to evolve, because I don't feel like we are ever just one thing. And I think the vehicle of entrepreneurship allows us to really embrace that Aquarian future of how we can build our lives around creativity but also around being of service. So you don't have to be just that one thing and you can constantly evolve as long as it fits into the ecosystem, as long as it serves you. So I'm very much in this pause right now as we're still in winter and really reflecting on, okay, yes, I I can be a business coach and yes, I can be um, a graphic designer and yes, I can be an artist and yes, I can be a medicine woman, but what what do I need to be right now? Not just for myself, but for others. And um, I don't have the answer to that question yet, but I am in a a very deep place of pause and rest this winter to to re-answer that question for myself so that I can go forward into spring with that clarity of of how do I want to serve and and what do I need and what do others need of me and how do I find that balance? Mm. Thank you for that massive permission slip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people have just gone, ah, oh, I don't have to be all of the things right now. You know, you can you can take that time, you you can rest. And so thank you for doing that for, for us all and reminding us that that is also part of this entrepreneurial journey. Now, when you when you cast your mind way forwards. Do you have a vision for what you want to be doing? I don't know where this is coming from, but it's just yeah. totally off script. <laughs> where where do you see yourself in like five years time? Uh, I think I definitely I'm I'm in that place right now because I just moved to Spain with my partner and we've been nomadic for the last two years when COVID hit. We met on our nomadic journey in Costa Rica. And I think being in that journey, um, I very much was like, okay, this is how my life is going to be. It's going to be constant change. It's going to be very intuitive and just like moving here and moving there and not really having a base, but just like being present to what is. But now we've just gotten to this place where we just moved into our first home together in Spain and we have a garden and we have uh, fruit trees and there's birds and we have altars. And I'm realizing that my soul is really craving to tend to a physical place. And that is very different from the way that I've built my business. So it's it's kind of shifted everything because the only thing I want to do right now is be at home and tend to my home and invite people into my home. So when I see myself in five years, um, I'm really dreaming of having a piece of land it doesn't need to be mine I don't need to own it but having a space that I that I can be of service to that I can add beauty to and that I can share that beauty with others and I'm really just feeling called to to create some sort of space that is uh, very inclusive because I've been to retreat centers and um, I've seen different like community-based models like permaculture suburbs I would call them or villages and I don't feel like my my soul is calling to like build a village like a lot of people feel called to but I feel like I'm I'm really being called to build a temple so me and my partner have been talking about that like we want to build our temple we want to build a place which may not sound realistic, (laughs) where people can just like come, like the people who need to come are going to come and they can just rest or they can just make art. And it's not necessarily going to be a community or a village, but it's going to be a place, a small intimate place where a few people can just come and drop in and take some time off to refine themselves. And whenever they're ready, they can go back into the world. Uh, so that's kind of my my dream at the moment that I'm nurturing and holding on to. Oh, you have said it under the new moon. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> it is. 
I see that for you. Um, mm. Really, really beautiful, and in, and a new way of of looking at community building. I also am echoing that moving into a new place. Obviously, we've spoken a bit about this, and my listeners know that I moved from London to Somerset a year ago now, and for the first time, I've got a garden of my own, and I'm growing my own vegetables, and it's all like winterized now, so everything's sleeping. But I'm so excited about my seed yeah. box, <laughs> <laughs> and I keep watching YouTube videos and like, can I plant? Can I plant things yet? Can I plant things yet? Um, and that has been so grounding for me. And a very interesting thing happened in my business was that. Actually, my business didn't really happen last year. I did a lot of behind the scenes stuff, created my new website, worked out what my new offerings looked like and how I wanted to spend my energy. You know, mm. I didn't want to do thousands of Zoom calls. I didn't want to run lots of group programs online. Like you wanted to bring yeah. people more to the house and have have things on on the land like we've got the space I've got a fire pit at the back there and then another another little one on the on the deck and I and I've done it and it's and it's happened and now I've got to this year and I've seen this amazing manifestation happen of community and 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 what's the word it's like the foundations right the foundations are there and now for me, this year is about, I've got the structure. Now I now I can get really creative and call those people in and put those price tags on things. Whereas last yeah. year, it was, all, it was just about me finding finding myself and not charging a lot for anything, but but coming back now in, in the new year and realizing, right, okay, I have got something really powerful here. How can I now take this to market in a really aligned way? way that is also honoring my energy and honoring the you know the difference in um income where I live as well I've come from a city in and you know people are really happy to pay 35 pound for a circle yeah a cacao ceremony at a studio whereas here it's a little bit different right and so just taking those things into account is it is that something that you are that you have been aware of and I suppose I'm just looking for a reflection oh no, totally I think I, I did this such a similar switch because before I went on my travels I was also living in London and now we're living um down in the south of Spain uh, it's not we're not in a very touristy area it's very much Spanish people very um cheap very affordable um and I think also just having a house, like, as you said, there's something like interesting about the metaphor or like the metaphorical language of cities where you could have the most amazing apartment. And then the next day someone's building a better apartment, right? Like if you live in East London, there's another new high rise. Now it's blocking your view and there's something better and kind of there's this invaluable nature to the way that we uh, interact in cities. It's very like transactional, even if you have the most heart-centered approach. Uh, There are so many factors that are made to help the economy of people and the economy of goods move in that transactional nature. But when people come out to the countryside um, and you have more of these homemade goods and like houses that are built by hands and textiles and so forth, there's no, there's no way to, to gauge the value other than how you feel. And I feel like when I moved into this house, um, not just my outer reality changed, but everything inside of me also changed. And the pace at which I create has changed. And the value that I put on things has changed. And I, I've really come a very far way of like, being a, a digital marketer, just like yourself, like going to school for marketing, working in that world, and seeing where, um, you know, online businesses are now evolving to. And there's so much scale, right? There's so much people can grow in their revenue. And there's so many ways that we can serve people online. But now that I'm outside of a city and I have a home and there's not this urgency to always leave my tiny apartment or go to the next thing, I I really have such a different relationship uh, with my computer, honestly. And that relationship is also with my business. And the intimacy that I crave is is now seeping into every part of my life, you know, like 
I'm now connecting with people and I'm like, let's just like plan a time to see each other and like just knit and like drink tea and like talk. And so um, this is where I'm asking myself these really big questions about my business because before it, I think the value was very based on how many customers I had, how much money I was making, how fast I was growing, like how my, like, yeah, the metrics, the online metrics, like how many visitors, how many followers and so forth. And now, I mean, that really just doesn't matter to me, like in a way that has to change the way I show up in my business because now that I've seen that I can create a beautiful life with so much less money, I don't need to be in that rat race. It, it What's my motivation, right? Because a lot of people in the coaching industry and so forth right now are like, well, if you're not making a three-figure salary, then like you're not successful. But I have things that are so invaluable. Like I cannot put a price tag, for example, to my garden. And so these are these are not things that I can equate to my business, but these are the things that I can equate to the richness of my life. So I, I totally resonate with you. I mean, how do we build a business based off of that richness? It's almost like a recipe, right? It's not about how expensive the ingredients are, but it's about the farmer and what's the relationship you have with them and, and the richness of the soil. And so it is kind of bringing in this, uh, you know, natural permaculturist approach to life which um, is so much deeper than any spreadsheet or or any numerical value. Like your excitement for your seeds is like no one can put a, <laughs> a price tag on that. No customer can come and give you that excitement, right? That just comes from being present with life, which is delicious. <laughs> oh, it is delicious. And the seeds I'm talking about are the ones that I, that I harvested from my apple tree after making apple oh. juice and thought, I'm going to plant these apple trees and give them out to my friends. And if we have to move, then I get to take one of these apple trees with me. So Aww. I yeah. love Somerset apples as well. So I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yes, this apple tree is a magnificent one. Just to go a little, little deeper yeah. on this, because there's so many things pinging off in my head. And um, I was having a conversation with my neighbor, Hamish, he is a coach similar to us. He he just popped into this tiny little village that I live in and turns out like we're totally on the same page. And we were discussing about how we charge a certain amount for, for coaching. So for like one session for for me is about three, seven, five. My my eight eight session package comes in at three grand. And then that's with um 50 pounds worth of cacao and cacao will hold you through through that journey with the business. I, I love your offering. I looked at it the other day and I was like, oh my God, I love that you're including cacao. Like, yeah, cacao is such a special place in my heart. And cacao, what cacao does for me is it takes, I mean, she helps support my coaching and I don't then yeah. have to put all of my energy and she is my ally. She, We're doing it together um because that that was something that I realized that was like I was kind of giving too much but I wanted to empower people to then if if they can create these ceremonies and rituals themselves that's like half of my job done yeah so I have this this is my my podcast I'm selling my stuff on my podcast no I love it <laughs> so I have this offering and then what I was talking to Hamish about was what's coming online again for me is my is my energy healing work mm, I was I've gonna yeah this, this room I've got this this space which is like spare room slash my office I could also turn it I could get a bed in here and turn it into a a healing space and but I, w I wouldn't be charging for an hour which is what people get three seven five for, yeah. a, for a healing session and it was just really interesting because he's going through the same thing with breath work coaching he's gonna be doing one-on-one -on -one breath work and he's like it it feels right to do it like a lot lower but then how do we define ourselves if we're not defined by money are we selling ourselves short what, how does that sit with you I'm really interested oh my god it's so confusing for me because something that like I I voiced to you um in our messages back and forth and it's it's so interesting right because let's take cacao for an example so people 
people know cacao. People eat chocolate all the time. They have cacao powder. Even if they don't know what raw cacao is, they have such a big relationship with cacao. But the value of raw cacao versus cacao powder is so different. And to like help people understand that value is is quite confusing. But even though the maybe the benefits are different between the two, I believe that cacao is still doing as deep of work with people in the chocolate they eat as she is in the block because her goal is to like reach the masses and like open up people's hearts and when you see how chocolate has spread into the world you see cacao doing her work and this is something i've seen with um the people that i work with and it's such a mirror for me because i see these people who have these different gifts and maybe they perceive them as living separately. So like, okay, I'm, I hold men's circles, for example, like this one guy I'm working with, um, I'm a medicine man, but then I'm also like a HR manager and a business coach. And I do high level accelerators for people. And what I realize when I connect with these people who I also consider not only to be my clients, but my biggest inspiration in life, my really close friends is that when I'm with them, all those gifts exist in one package. So just by being their friend, every time I connect with them, I'm experiencing all of those gifts. So it's been really hard for me in my pricing model to try to separate those two, because I realize that even if somebody comes to me for website design and they don't come for me for business coaching, I'm still giving them business coaching in their website design. And maybe they're not coming to me for tarot and astrology, but I cannot... I cannot give to somebody and not include that in the way that we work together. And that applies for Reiki, that applies for uh, anything that I'm learning in my life, my understanding of herbalism, crystals, and so forth. They're so integrated into my being. And so I, I have a lot of people that I admire for the way that they put together their offerings. And I don't think that there's one right way to do it. I just think that there is the right way for you. And I know some people who charge what others would consider a ridiculous amount for a very small one hour offering. And then I know others that don't charge a lot. And I think it's so hard for us to really see into someone's life because there are so many other ways. Like, I think we talked about this on our last call. Like there is a force beyond capitalism that helps us to meet our needs. So what you perceive somebody to be making or what you perceive yourself to be making is so incredibly limited. And I've noticed that in my life, like in the times where um, I've made the least amount of money. I have been given the most amount of financial support from strangers. And I've been offered to live in houses for free. I've been offered so many different exchanges that don't involve money. So I would say in the year that I was making the least amount of money, my life was the richest it was. So people were looking at me and they were like, how are you traveling so much? How are you living in these places? How are you getting this, this, and this? And I honestly had such little money if I compared myself to when I was working in London, uh, being a marketing consultant, making like, you know, four or 5K a month to then being in Costa Rica, trying to figure out who I am and what I'm doing. But I always had a place to stay. I always had food. I always had like incredible rich experiences and opportunities, but I didn't have that stable salary and I didn't have any high ticket offerings. So it's been like so interesting for me to, again, like really look at my life from that permaculture perspective and really see like, what are my needs? And what are the ways that life is trying to support me in feeling those needs that might not be monetarily like, valued. And then even though I have prices, I'm not going to say I'm a strict person that I charge everyone that price. And I really try to like tune in and listen to what is the opportunity here? Like, what is the gift? And sometimes I feel like I get that really right. Other times I would say, oh, you know, looking back on it, I wish I charged more or I wish I did this package differently. But there's always a gift in it for me. And so I'm just trying to be really patient with that learning process. Like, I don't feel like I have the answer, but it's it's really about, as you said, like, as we're talking about with this Aquarius age, how can you serve yourself while serving others? So you're in Somerset. If, you, if you're really yearning to connect with as many clients and to offer your healing as possible, maybe it doesn't make sense to charge, you know, 400 pounds for an hour, but maybe you need 400 pounds. So is there some 
other place in your life where you can open that channel for that money to come. And maybe it doesn't need to be in your physical healing sessions. Maybe it's in your online course. Um, maybe it's in, you know, selling a bunch of junk in your house that you don't need anymore. Uh, may, you know, who knows? But I, I always just try to remember that the economy is not the be all and the end all of my financial situation. And there is God, there is spirit. <laughs> and and that bank account and that market is always stable <laughs> and it runs infinitely and i just have to like listen uh to my you know higher up financial advisor to be able to make the right <laughs> decisions <laughs> um and that is not maybe the financial advice that a lot of people would subscribe to but that's just what works for me <laughs> oh Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up to your quantum accountancy. <laughs> so, oh, yes. I mean, I just want to, like, I was clicking and shaking and doing all the things as you were speaking. I feel like I'm so activated from, from your words. I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. It feels, oh, it feels like a breath of fresh air to, to hear this. And I, and I love the way that you're looking at permacil perm permaculture permaculture as the model and bringing that into all areas of your life and your business and um it feels like that's the way that that we need to move forwards now yeah and it's 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 this like thing that i think we we do learn in business school like when we look at the business plan model you have these different parts and you need to like value the different parts of your business but i think in in permaculture you have this almost uh lens of what is actually essential like your zones and like what needs to be closest to you and for example like a herb garden like you know if you were in a a different way of thinking that would not make any sense like why would you need a herb garden like other other people they don't even understand the value of herbs but when you can go into that mindset of understanding uh the way that life works and the richness of life and the richness of the aliveness of the things around you then of course having a herb garden next to your kitchen makes the most sense and it makes the most sense to have your you know uh reforesting far away and your chickens over here but it's so personal to what your house needs and i think now that i have a house i can really think in that model of like what brings me the most joy and when you said oh i don't really like being on zoom calls this is what I really ask my my clients. The same question you asked me is like, what would your ideal day look like? And be really honest with that and stick to that. And so for me, yeah, I really hate Zoom calls. Like if I'm just being so honest and I really hate being on calls all the time. And I need like a large majority of my day to just think and to be creative and to be in the kitchen. I absolutely love cooking. Like I need to be able to say today, I just want to bake a cake and not have to like move around meetings because when I'm baking that cake, I might have the best ideas of my entire life. <laughs> so that might not make a lot of sense in terms of productivity, but in terms of like what my soul needs, um, when I've made those switches and when I haven't compromised on that, I have seen some of the greatest results in, in my growth. And I guess that is that, you know, tapping into that feminine nature. And I know it is such a, a hard balance between the feminine and the masculine, but I definitely grew up very masculine oriented. So I can switch into that mode of strategy. I can switch into that mode of doing like that. But when it comes to the relaxing, I actually need to place more importance on like dedicating myself to that receptivity of life, to the receiving, to being in that alignment and that vibration of calm so that my life can continue to to flow in that way as opposed to you know, always being ready to to do something and change something and make the Canva design and launch the new thing. It's like, no, like, listen, mm. <laughs> just listen. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's always, it's always a learning. It's always a learning experience. I feel like I've never gotten it. I'm just understanding it at a deeper level. Yeah. Okay, there's so many different places where we could take this now. I'm like, I'm gonna look at my questions, and my head is is full of of more questions for you. Um, one thing here, when you were saying that you're constantly evolving, and um, you said something about Instagram. I just wanted to bring bring it to Instagram for a second because as I was scrolling through um, 
this morning I feel like we've our feed is kind of similar and yeah. it really and it really <laughs> reflects the the opening and closing of our of our offerings and um often I'll go on people's Instagram's feeds and and it's very kind of blocky and it's and there's lots of um in, there's a lot of information on there there's a lot of how to there's a lot of you know that those people have put in so much work into yeah. content creation whereas what I'm seeing in in yours and, and mine it's it's very off the cuff sometimes you go into a phase where you're like where, where you're selling something and there's more graphics popping up but then it's just then it's it's reality then it's 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 real life for you and it is your constant creative expression and then it's back to the the masculine I see the masculine structure comes in and also your color palettes are totally seasonal it's like what yeah. whatever's going on in <laughs> whatever country you're in the the color palette represents that is that something you've noticed yourself yeah or like, yeah totally and it's so interesting that you because I was listening to a podcast yesterday that was a it was like talking about the difference between like strategy and flow and again like I think one thing that has been such a huge gift to me is to have my partner in my life because he is a full-time artist he's a musician he's just a, a genius and he is he is creativity and so having him in my life and seeing the way that he creates has been such a good reminder for me because when I look at pictures of me as a child I was an artist. And then somewhere along the way, I wanted to be a business person. But when I go back to that decision, it wasn't because I loved business. It was because I understood that the world speaks right now through the language of business. And so I always grew up with the understanding that if I didn't understand business, I would never be successful. So I had friends. Most of my friends went to art school. Most of my friends are graphic designers. Like all of my friends went down the creativity route, but then I saw where they didn't have the business skills. And so you have the story of like all the starving artists who like never got famous and lived on the streets and, you know, ate bread, right? And so I think when I see like my partner for me in my life represents the reminder that you are an artist. And so, and when I think about being an artist, it's about being real, being vulnerable. And in this podcast, they were saying that, no, you need to show up. Like you can't just not post for three weeks and like, you need to be like on your game and you need to like gain trust and consistency. But when I really think about the way that I work and the people that have come to me, it has always been organic. And even when I haven't posted for whatever, people find me. And it's because I am actively doing the work to tell the universe that I am ready for somebody. And my business exists outside of me having a website. My business exists outside of Instagram and I am an artist. And so I find that if I'm advertising something at the same time that I'm working with somebody, for me, that energy doesn't really have a symbiosis with each other because I'm creating these really intimate containers. And so I can only fit so many people in those containers. So right now I'm on a deep journey with three clients. And so as much as I want to advertise to get that next client, that next client is going to come. As soon as I finish this work, because that's what it means to be of service, right? As soon as I finish this work, the universe will give me the next work. And that's where I kind of go back into my true identity as an artist, right? So if I were to write a poetry book, I'm not going to be in that process, that birthing process, that sacred process, and already be thinking about, oh, but what about my next book? Oh, how can I start getting the deals for my next book? No, because this is sacred. This is like birthing a child. And that's what I kind of remind myself whenever I try to, you know, get ahead of myself or go back into the matrix. It's like, I am birthing something. Everything that I create is, is so important to me. And even if it doesn't look consistent on Instagram, I know the work that I'm doing and my work is with spirit. My work is with myself and it doesn't matter if nobody sees that. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look polished. I know the work that I show up to every day. And it, it's, I mean, I've had to go through such a big process. Uh, I also went through a very similar path as you. I went to Costa Rica um, to study permaculture and yoga and Reiki. And then um, I immediately finished all my trainings and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to being a business consultant and open my laptop. And I had so many jobs and then ayahuasca came into my life and I started drinking medicine and doing ceremonies. 
And it came up so many times. It was like, I am, the medicine told me, I'm not going to give you abundance until you learn what you're supposed to do. And I kept just saying, what does that mean? What does that mean? I would, I would come out of the ceremony. I'm like, but what does that mean? What am I supposed to be doing? Okay. I'm supposed to work. I open my computer again, right after ceremony. I go to the next interview. I get the next client. And every single time it wouldn't work out. I would get a job for somebody. I would say, yes, it, it would look amazing. And then they wouldn't pay me. And it happened so many times that eventually after one ceremony, I was going to have another interview for another job that I didn't need, but just because I wanted more, 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 more. Somebody stole my laptop. Somebody from the ceremony who, you know, now we have a great relationship. I love her. She was of service. She was the reality check that I needed. It was definitely beyond what she wanted to do or what I wanted to do. But the truth is that I needed to learn a lesson to shut my freaking computer <laughs> and stop working and really sit myself down and remind myself why I'm living this life, which is not to answer emails. It's not to build websites. It's not to build pitch decks. It's to figure out who I am. And so I, for one year, didn't have a computer. Right now, I still am using a friend's computer that they lent me. I have not bought a new computer yet because what is my relationship with my work? And that's the effective altruism. Like my work is with myself. And so we can get so caught up in this trap of serving others. And even in that, we think we're serving others, but we're still serving ourselves. I'm saying yes to that new job that's going to give me 6K because I want more and I want more and I want more. Oh, but it's sustainability. I got so in that trap. Oh, but it's good. Oh, but it's a healer. Oh, but it's a yoga teacher. Oh, but it's for the new earth, right? But what is it for? Like, what is it for if I'm not present with my loved ones? What is it for if I'm not learning new things? What is it for if I'm not spending time outside? What is it for if I'm not relaxing? And so after losing my computer, I spent the last year being very ill. I had COVID twice. Um, I almost died. Um, and so I've just had to heal. And so it's really this, this thing of like, come back to being here now, what Ramda says, like be here now and allow now to be different, constantly different. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's the initiations are real, right? <laughs> Life will always try to bring you back to this present moment. And I just try to remind the people I work with, you know, they say, oh, something happened this week. I can't make the call or I didn't finish the assignment. And I'm saying, be with it. Like that is life. Like I can give you journal prompts. I can give you these guiding questions or a workbook. But the truth is that when you sign up to work with me, you're just signing up to be present. And so I'm going to tell you, let's cancel the call and go be with that. <laughs> and when you're done being with that, I'll be, I'll be here. But um, I'm kind of, you know, being the teacher that I needed on that journey of reminding people that, you know, you might have paid to build a website, but this was never about the website. <laughs> this is <was> about you. <laughs> oh, yes. I've been on that journey so many times with clients. This this isn't about the, the color palette. This no. This is about the, 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 that tiny little flick on the logo that you won changed about five times. It's so much more than that. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I feel like you're in full channel mode then. I was oh. just sitting back and receiving all of all of your beautiful words. Um I, I just want to hone in on your this this gap, this um space that, that was created by the loss of the laptop and then the um the health things coming up. I found a similar thing on my end moving here to the countryside. I have last year I've been the most ill I've been for so long. And you would have thought coming out of the city, in the country, spend lots more time in nature, feeling vital, feeling great. But actually this, what the space has done for me is, is it's gone, it's given me the time to heal the things that have maybe been underlying yeah. um, and like little autoimmune things, womb things, all, all of the things. So, yeah just just noticing that that similarity when we do have the space our our body and our spirit knows that it can it can let go now and it and i don't see the the things that we get the the diseases the healings necessarily as a bad thing it's um to me they feel like little initiations and little upgrades yeah 
Yeah. And I love that um, when we connected, we both shared like going through this big journey with our womb and fertility. And um, I had an atopic pregnancy where, yeah, I almost died and was in the hospital and it was the most traumatic, but also the most beautiful experience um, in the sense that I have never felt uh, closer to God than those, you know, six hours of going down the mountain in Costa Rica and trying to get to the hospital and something that I realized is like the metaphor of life. And that's where I love um, poetry so much, because I think when you're sick, you or when you're going through some sort of big physical healing on your body, the only thing you can do is think. And I noticed in those times, it's so easy for me to open a computer and create something. And the reason why I call myself a master builder is because I'm a life path number 22. Um, so it is very much in my design and in my calling to to build things. And people want to hire me to help them build things. And that's how I got in the startup world. And I'm always the one to just say, let's just do it. Let's just make something bigger out of this thing. And when it came to me and my partner wanting to have a child, I think... I'm so grateful, you know, for the challenges that we've had on that journey, because again, it's like, it's, it's the deeper question of like, why, like, why are we creating things? Like, why are you creating something? This effective altruism. Um, I taught a, a course, like a small uh, workshop on this in my old university with all these amazing uh, young students who are going into entrepreneurship and they're just so excited, right? So they're going through like TechCrunch and LinkedIn and they are bombarded with all these amazing ideas of the next Mark Zuckerberg. And there was one beautiful uh, girl who's a really good friend of mine. And she said, I want to create uh, plastic roads, like roads made of recycled plastic in Africa, because I want to like give back to my country and like teach them about sustainability. And I had each student come up and like pitch their idea. And then I said to her, do you drive a car? And she said, no. And I was like, okay, do you care about roads? And she was like, no. And I was like, okay, so like, let's distill what you want to do. Like when I hear you, I hear you saying you want to inspire people. You want to go back to your country and you want to inspire people. So what's the easiest way to inspire people? And I was like, how about you just use your voice? Like, how about you just find opportunities to be on stage and speak? And everyone's like, you know, scratching their heads. How am I going to, how am I going to get a billion dollars? How am I going to be the next unicorn if I just gather people and, and speak? And so that's why I love this idea of effective altruism because it comes back to all of our wounds of as a society especially with our parents you know you hear so many of these stories of like okay well you know we used to just have kids so they could tend to the land and the more kids you had the more people you had to take care of you and we're moving away from this unconscious creating to conscious creation and i think this the last two years for me and for my partner have really been so many deep really challenging mm -hmm. life situations to ask us why are you creating what you're creating and every time i think i found it this last two years life has kicked me down back to the ground every time i think i'm running forward and this is coming from my heart and this is why we want to build a family or this is why i want to start my business life trips me and i fall flat on my face but in the mud when i can't get back up i realize no it needs to be deeper than that you know it needs to be deeper than that and that is really hard to keep going on that process of admitting that you know maybe there is something in genuine here. Maybe there is something that's not fully authentic. Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe it's not the right place. Maybe I need to change, you know? And I think you can go so down a path of trying to improve yourself, but you'll never not need to change. And I really had to admit that and reflect on that. And, and, you know, part of that change was like, no, I'm not going to bring a baby into this world without having a home no, I'm not going to bring a baby into this world without like being able to create the space that I would want and not just hope that that space is going to appear. Or maybe, no, I'm not just going to create a business just so I can charge a lot of money and make websites. No, I really want to, I want to get as much out of it as I'm, as I'm giving to people. And maybe I don't even want to make websites. Maybe I don't even want to be a business coach, like just to allow for that 
beginner's mind to come back in that same grace that, you know, I was given as a student or that I can give other students of like, you are allowed to start over in your way of thinking. Like you're allowed to rebirth yourself into whatever level of consciousness that you want. And that is something so terrifying for humans to think of, right? Because we think of evolution as forwards and backwards, but I think me and you and other people who have you know, worked very deeply with consciousness and in understanding our consciousness through meditation or breath work or psychedelics or whatever your vice is, you understand that evolution is not up or down or side to side. Evolution just is. And we weren't less evolved then or more evolved there. We are just a, a Taurus as the shape, you know, in permaculture. Like we are a constant vortex of a swirl and like where do you want to find your your center in that and um th these journeys with my health and with losing like the tools that I needed to run my business and and being so frustrated I can't create like I was so frustrated like wow not only did I lose my laptop not only um like I had also like oh my god I had lost so much money this last year oh my god now I lost uh, one of my fallopian tubes oh my god I almost lost my life oh my god I lost this baby like so much loss but then to understand like, what was I trying to create? What was I really trying to create? And did I have the conditions to create it? And the only answer that I've found to be genuine for me is like, I need to be creating more love. And if something doesn't feel like love, it will not be created. Life will find a way to tear it down, decompose it back into the soil, so that it can come back up more beautiful, you know, like winter, like your seeds, your our annuals that are going to bloom. Like, cause yeah, for me, that's, that's just it. Right. It just, it just wants to be love. <laughs> and, um, on the way, I, I know I've, I've seen myself get so distracted in that. And I see other women in their fertility journeys or their journey with their health. And we get in these traps of, well, I want to be a woman enough and that's why I want to have a kid or um, I want to be healthy enough because if I'm healthy, then I'm higher up on the consciousness scale or I want to be successful enough so I'm seen as a more evolved being and, and this trap of be trying to be uh, an enlightened, like I always say, I'm not here to be enlightened. I didn't come to earth to be enlightened. I came to earth to be human and I never wanted to subscribe to to these paths, you know, you see of other spiritual traditions and teachers of wanting to become rainbow Buddha. I used to have an obsession with, with learning about the rainbow Buddha phenomenon. And it's like, no, I, I chose here to, to be here. And so what is here for me? And I think that what is here is, is being able to really feel love because you have the duality, you have the contrast. So my life is going to be discovering that duality. And so by losing a child, by losing my computer, by losing my money by, you know, losing so many things in my life, I now get to understand where I'm building from. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Mm. Your journey is strong. And there's so much wisdom in, in your words. Uh, I feel like I'm listening to a podcast and I have to remind myself, <laughs> okay, I'm hosting this. Um, I cannot wait to listen to this back. Thank you for sh for sharing part of your fertility journey. As, as you know, as we've spoken, I'm, I'm on my own fertility journey as well. And um, what's coming up for me in this space is similar to you in like, oh, it couldn't have happened then. It just didn't, it, the, the, the further along the path I get, the more wise I'm getting about my body and, and and what my body needs right now and and the space and and like you said with your with your partner, the, the opening and the deepening of, of the relationship as you move through these portals of grief and of initiation is I mean in in the last year our my relationship with Aleko has just got so so deep so strong and and so freeing we both have so much freedom in our in our loving relationship we're 
we're we're away and we're apart from each other quite often and then when we come together it's it's solid and, and it's grounded and um I'm just going to share a little bit about my please cambo, yeah cambo journey as well because we were talking about this before and I and I and I want to br- bring it back through because I my intention with taking cambo and sitting with this sacred tree frog medicine from the Amazon was to um was to heal some of my womb trauma and towards the the end of the ceremony after I'd um expelled from both ends <laughs> felt like it was <laughs> one of the things that Alex the um my my friend who who is administering the cambo said to me she said you are once I put this on you're gonna feel like you'll say to yourself why the hell did I do this can it yeah. can somebody take it off and that was just the best thing that she could have said to me because yeah it was halfway through I was like <laughs> can can somebody take this off um and as I was sitting on the loo you know doing doing my thing my dog came in to the oh. <laughs> to the toilet and he licked the, he licked the two dots of camera off my leg, leaving off. And he was I like, shouted, yep, yep, she doesn't need that much. <laughs> yeah. I shouted, Alex, Alejo, my partner, Alejo. Yeah. It was like, the dogs licked the camera. Alex was like, no, it's, it's going to be okay. It's fine. Aww. And just go back, going back to the partner thing, having, so I was there in my living room, in my space with, my, with a, another friend of mine, but my partner was in the house grounding the energy of 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 the masculine the masculine that I needed at that time to just be there you know just just in case and and then I came back into the to the living room I lay down and then I thought okay what's next and then the womb healing came my body started to shake my all I was thinking of was like my my legs were shaking like a deer that's just Mm. run managed to run away from the jaguar and and I was shaking 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 and then I felt this like lump in my womb Mm. and it started to twist and turn and then go down into my cervix and then I felt it being birthed from my body and it wasn't it wasn't a happy birth. It was a traumatic one. And I was releasing, releasing. I actually got my hand and I was like almost pulling energy. And Alex was singing her echoes and sharing her medicine and and having her hands on my womb and just giving that energy that I have so, so craved, but not found it in the the womb healing space on Instagram. Yeah, (laughs) I hadn't, I needed to kind of go to this like, warrior energy place in order to experience that that I needed to to release and the the sort of the the more surface level womb uh healing kind of meditations I'm not saying please no shade on surface level womb healing meditation but for me that wasn't it wasn't going deep enough and this sacred frog medicine helped me go to that deep deep place and I had absolutely no control of what was going on there now going back to the to the partner space like having I needed to do that before I'm clearing the space for this soul to come in and then having my partner there afterwards going and getting his food and feeding me and my friend Chris that evening and just and looking after us I'm like wow this is him in as a father yeah this is showing he's showing up as a yeah as in that space and we're looking after a dog at the moment as well my Mm -hmm. dog from my previous relationship the dog that licked the cambo nine years ago I split up (laughs) my traumatic relationship and this dog is here again holding me through this next next portal and seeing how my partner interacts with it with a dog when we're when we have him together is like wow you're a father again and that's just really highlighting my trust in fatherhood because my experience with fatherhood is multi-layered and I'm not going to say it's good or bad the lessons were learned there and yeah and but there's a lot of healing that needs to be done and it is it's happening in front of me yeah it is yeah and I love how you 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 are acknowledging the the multi-layered 
aspect of this. And it's interesting because I'm, I haven't also resonated with a lot of, uh, I have, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of people that I do resonate a lot when it comes to womb healing, but I haven't necessarily found like, uh, my place. I think me and my partner, we did a lot of combo on our journey around, um, yeah, f- figuring out the relationship with the soul that was trying to connect with us and combo is a very uh, strong medicine for fertility. So it is known to help increase uh, that that chance of bringing in a soul. But it's, as you said, it's so multi-layered. And when I see people selling these courses or offering these services of like, call in your spirit child, I have no doubt that that is their medicine and that is their calling. But I think there's so much pressure on the idea that it is up to you and your partner. And again, like going back to that, like higher acknowledgement of the bigger forces in the universe. And it is just, there are things that are waiting to find you and what you're clearing, as you said, like this clearing that you felt in your room, you can go to therapy, you can do all the healing modalities, but you are a channel for the collective. And so one thing that was so interesting for me after I had um, my atopic pregnancy and I started sharing very openly about it, I had a couple of other friends who had a miscarriage that same week that I was in the hospital. And I had other women reaching out to me saying, oh, I had an atopic pregnancy. Oh, my mom had an atopic pregnancy. Oh, my girlfriend had an atopic pregnancy. And so something that is supposed to be rare that affects, I think they say one to 2% of women suddenly was like 40 people in my DMs. And so it is this understanding from an astrological perspective. Um, I think just in the last couple of weeks, we have now moved out of Black Moon Lilith going through cancer. And so Black Moon Lilith is about what are our deepest wounds. Black Moon Lilith, Lilith represents Eve who was kicked out of the garden. And there are stories about how in her rage, she went and killed a bunch of children. And so it is our deepest wounds within the feminine moving through the sign of cancer, which is our mother, which is our womb. And so astrology and just overall my very uh, wide perspective that I'm always trying to widen my perspective of life has helped me to get my eye, the eye that is Alex and the events that happened to Alex out of the picture, because it can be so hard to be like, why is this not happening for me? But There are so many experiences that life wants you to have and having a kid might be one of them. It might not be one of them, but you get to experience that in so many ways. So you got to experience giving birth in your combo. I know women who have experienced giving birth in an ayahuasca ceremony. I know people who can experience the medicine of fatherhood with their boyfriend and not with their father or with their neighbor or in a men's circle or, you know, being held or by their massage therapist, like the vibration of these experiences goes beyond the constellations of the people in our lives and the events in our life. And, you know, coming back to this understanding that we are all one energy that is choosing to represent itself in different energies, then I can understand that even if I'm not a mother right now, um, since that experience, so many mothers came to my side. I had so many mothers coming into my life and I could experience the joy of motherhood through them and understand that a part of my soul that lives in them is experiencing motherhood. But I had the same thing, like me and my partner, you know, we needed to go through all these grieving processes. And right now my mom is in the hospital and it's just been a lot of grief. It's been a lot of, um, being very close to death and like, how do we relate to death? And in that, you know, I have received an unshakable confirmation of my love for my partner and his love for me and a love that is not based on this fear of losing each other because we, we all know each other on such a deep, profound level. And, you know, this dog, maybe when you met it, you were like, oh, I don't know about this dog. But then now you're like, oh, I know this dog. Like, we go way back. Like, like, like it's an ancient soul. So I, I'm always just supporting other women. And I have a lot of women who have not come into my life who are really, you know, craving and feeling this call to be a mother. And just, like, reminding us that, like, you know, no matter what happens, you are a mother. And even if you don't have a baby in this lifetime, your body's wisdom is mothering that channel to souls. So your body saying, no, not now, 
that is the gift of the mother to say, no, it is not, it is not your time to come through. This is not how you're supposed to come through. You are mothering souls. You just don't see them. And so anyone who has a womb, and in this case, I do mean a physical womb just in this lifetime, you know, we, we switch genders and other lifetimes. And I know it's such a sensitive topic, but the people who are going through the experience right now in this lifetime of having a womb, a physical womb, no matter how they identify in a way have chosen the path of, of understanding what it means to, to mother in that way, to be the gatekeeper, the goddess. Uh, I love the tarot. So the justice card, the goddess with the scales in between life and death, the same in Egyptian mythology, Isis, you know, all these beautiful mother Mary, you're choosing to experience that, that experience, even if you're not conscious of it, but every day, that you wake up and you have a womb and you take care of your womb, you are mothering souls and you are mothering your soul. And from that perspective, it's really brought me so much um, healing for my heart. And I see the healing in my my friends and my sisters and the people around me to just acknowledge that even if you haven't given birth, you are a mother, you know, you are carrying that that medicine through your womb because you were in your mother's womb and your grandmother's womb and you chose to have this physical manifestation of this channel. Yeah. Yeah. I really feel, feel that my mother archetype came online about, about 10 years ago. Mm. It really did. And then actually, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing it didn't, it didn't. And I'm looking (laughs) and I'm going back another 10 years in my head and I'm seeing when I first stepped into university age 18 and set up the Salford University Breakdown Society, I was the mother of a group of gorgeous guys, five of them, and they would all they would all come round to my house and I would cook for them and then we'd go and then we'd go to practice. And so I was mothering then, even when I was 18. And then when I look back, I had a younger sister and I would always be gathering her sort of young friends, tell it, asking them to come with me. I was mothering then. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's why I love, um, I do a lot of work with tarot and astrology and I love just reminding people that like the, the beauty of this existence is that you can play with any archetype. And so in that, you, you can see that beyond these physical bodies, you can have whatever experience you want and you can mother yourself and you can mother others and you can father yourself and you can father others. And it's like a video game. The more video games you play, the more characters you play, the same in musical theater, the more roles you get casted for, the better of an actor, the better of a human you become because you're just having more experience in in this beautiful play. And that is so powerful for people not to get stuck. And that's why I do think it is beautiful in this Aquarian age that, you know, people are finding out how they want to be uh, seen and how they want to be acknowledged. And we're changing pronouns and names and we're just changing our avatars. However people feel about that, uh, we've been doing that since the beginning of time, you know, before these labels existed, before there was a language or a, a category to put these people in, we are all constantly trying to change our avatars to have different experience to unlock different archetypes in our life to really find like what feels good for us and that is always going to be changing and that's where i love my theater background and like improv you need to always be ready to like okay you're now the store clerk but now i'm the customer and then okay no i'm now i'm going to be the mailman and we just have to like we have to have fun with it, right? Oh, I <laughs> love have, that. I love we that. have to have fun. <laughs> I used to get my mum to, um, just a, this is a, a fun game that I invented when I was a kid, was I'd be like, because I was a dra- drama kid as well. Yeah. And, I, and I'd say, <laughs> oh, mum, do me do me a face. Tell, tell, tell me like a, a face, like be um, forlorn or or look, <laughs> look, look sad. Look as if your cat has just died. And, I'd, <laughs> and I, she was... She, I didn't. I don't think she realized how much I got out of this game. I absolutely <laughs> loved like having to do this whole like, oh, I'm so sad, or I'm really happy. I'm really. I love like chopping and changing, and I suppose that's kind of been a bit of a metaphor for for my life as well. I, I know when I meet people and I um I choose one of the 
sections of my life to kind of share and then they know me a little bit longer and a bit longer and they go whoa you it sounds like you've had about nine lives lives yeah (laughs) like yep I just keep changing that hat and I find that that helps so much with my business and my coaching because I've led lots of different walks of life and so when a client is presented in front of me there's there's always a common thread that I can find yeah yeah. And that, yeah, that's the beauty of diversity. And we are all diverse and we can put on as many labels as we want, but we are all ancient souls. And the more that we really embody that diversity, I think the more fun we get to have in this lifetime. And I think we're now stepping into a world that's going to reflect that and create like positive ecosystems for people to um, explore that and embody that. And when I come back to this dream that I have of having this temple, um, it's it's inspired by models that I've seen before, but I don't remember the name now, but there's a place in California and this idea of having like artist residencies where people can just get a scholarship and come and live at a place and have all the tools that they need but it's it's really embracing the fact that we are all artists. And so I just want to have this space that would allow people to take time off from mm-hmm. their responsibilities, from their work, from all the labels that they've collected in their life to come and be a blank canvas and to have all their basic needs met, to be able to be taken care of and nurtured but have a free space to explore. And I don't know exactly how that's going to look like, but I want to allow it to be as diverse as possible. So maybe somebody wants to come and explore painting, but maybe somebody wants to come and explore engineering and maybe somebody wants to come and explore cooking and maybe somebody wants to come and explore being a mother and just like really have that undefined temple space um, that I have found pockets of on my spiritual journey of just, you know, losing my laptop and, oh my God, my laptop was my life. So I was living in a ayahuasca retreat center. Actually, I was staying in the room next to my partner. We weren't dating yet. And I just woke up and I was like, what do I do with myself? I don't have a computer. And I would just like hear him singing and hear him making music in his room and hear him like playing guitar on the balcony. And then like, there are things that you can do without a computer. Like I had to like really be like, wow, like what were the things I wanted to do before I started working? And it was, wow, I wanted to sing and I wanted to learn how to play guitar and I wanted to do something for the sake of doing it, not to be good at it, not to sell it, (laughs) not to have it be useful, but just to explore myself through that medium as ridiculous or crazy that that can look but to really come back to being a kid in the playground. And so, yeah, I think when I think about this dream, it, it's really this uh, accumulation of all my life lessons of being, you know, I've, I've always never fit in a box. Like I'm Hispanic, but then I'm black, but then I'm a little bit Arabic, but then I'm living in England, but then I grew up in the US, but then my mom's this, my dad's this, I went to the school, you know, all the ridiculous things that we collect and people just looking at me and being like, you know, what are you and who are you? And I'm starting to get more comfortable with saying, you know, I don't know. And, and I've always been that person in in startups and in projects who's always asking questions and people get so uncomfortable because I'm, I'm not looking for the answers. I'm just like the queen of questions. And I just invite other people and I want to create spaces that can invite other people to be in the questions with me because questions can lead to more questions. And I just don't believe that that's a bad thing. (laughs) I believe that that's a beautiful thing um, when we can surrender to that, to the mystery. So yeah, just trying to cultivate a very deeper love for this mystery. Mm, And this is why I have a podcast because I too am a question master. (laughs) Yeah. That's where we connect. Like as soon as I saw you, I was like, oh my God, I needed this mirror, right? I really, I needed this mirror in my life. And uh, as I'm asking myself these big questions about my business, it's so beautiful that you've come into my life. And as I shared this morning, I feel like it has such a divine purpose because even though I help people ask these questions and I bring them through this process and I have workbooks, my mind said, no, you're not going to coach yourself through this 
rebirth of whatever you're supposed to be doing. You're not going to coach yourself through this. You're not going to sit down with the journal prompts. And so I've just been sitting and I've been allowing myself to do nothing. And then beautiful Emma came into my life (laughs) and you were this mirror for me to say like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Everything that you've done. And like, how can I look back on it and love it, but then also not be defined by it. And so I'm so grateful for your presence and your reflection and you came, you know, I didn't order you. I didn't search for you on the internet. <laughs> mm. You just showed up. <laughs> so I always just trust that, you know, when we believe in ourselves, you don't have to believe in God or whatever that means. But when you just believe in yourself and in the unfolding of your own life, it will continue to believe in you. Yes. yes. <laughs> I would put my hands up there like under my hot water bottle because it's like so cold. I'm like, <laughs> oh wow I just like I'm I'm almost all the words have been taken out of my mouth because I we, we've te- we've nailed it <laughs> <laughs> such it's been such an incredible conversation I could honestly go for another hour but I'm gonna start to wrap it up yeah now this was in beautiful <laughs> I've after this conversation though I am writing down some more I've even I've got even more questions for you please and I, I, hardly, have... I hardly even touched the surface on my on my notes which is really interesting it's probably one of the first podcasts where I've gone completely like off notes and just really really felt it so it'd be interesting for the listeners to see if they they notice any difference <laughs> So I, before we close, I'd like to know a little bit about your retreats um, Mm. and what they look like. And so I know that the dates are still yet to land for those, but just can, can you give our listeners a bit of information about how they can work with you and what one of your retreats kind of looks like? Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what, um, what this retreat experience is going to be like, because I've spent the last uh, year and a half doing a lot of different retreats, being just like a facilitator and a co-planner with other people and living at retreat centers. And recently I've been getting the calling of like, it's time for you to do a retreat. And so uh, the retreat is called Earth Resonance. Um, Currently in the process of uh, picking a new venue, but we have an incredible team of, of facilitators. And the idea for this retreat is like a mini version of this temple like experience that I've been dreaming of. And so it is combining these different modalities of uh, psychology, astrology, music, uh, the science behind vibration and resonance, permaculture, and art. Uh, to hold people in this container um, in a beautiful space surrounded by nature where they can really explore what it means to be them. So it's not this typical style retreat, okay, come to heal or come to be a better business person or come to learn X, Y, and Z. It's really come to experience. That's the invitation that we're giving people. And um, we are going to be using nature as the foundation for this experience. So permaculture is very much woven throughout this experience. And uh, we are going to be uh, working with some of the amazing plant teachers in our life. So uh, we are going to be working with psilocybin and cacao. And um, yeah, we'll see what other plants, maybe sage, rosemary. I, I love, I love, love, love plants. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, they're going to be our uh, teachers as well on this journey. And something I realized my experience with my plant medicine journey was um, that I felt that the integration was something that was missing and plant medicines have been so expansive for me. I don't think they're the only way that we grow. I don't think they're for everyone, but for me personally, they have played a really positive and important role in my life. And having been to so many different ceremonies and different spaces, I kind of felt like you have this huge experience and then typically the model is that you sit in a circle and we we talked about this a bit and you just hey, what happened? You you go into these sharing circles and it's always like so rushed and we are not really 
in this day and age used to sharing things anyway, <laughs> uh, verbally at least in that vulnerable setting of like being in a circle. So uh, with the use of mushrooms in this retreat, um, and we're also going to be working with Blue Lotus, which has been a really uh, important plant for me and my partner, um, is that we want people to open themselves up with the help of these teachers, with the help of these tools, not just psychedelics, but with music, with astrology, with tarot, with art, but then be able to communicate that and integrate that in a different way. So after our ceremonies, uh, we will have a sharing circle, but before we have a sharing circle, we will be doing um, some subconscious uh, art therapy session with an incredible friend of mine, Anna, and an amazing artist in London. Uh, she came over as uh, she was an asylum seeker um, from Russia and she works now at King's College with different female refugees and using art therapy as a tool for them to heal and integrate their traumatic experience that they have been through in relocating themselves uh, to the United Kingdom and um, joined by my other friend Tom who's a psychologist and he has had uh, what you would say is quote-unquote like um what people fear the most, like he has gone through a psychosis. That's like people's biggest fear. What if I lose my mind? Um, and through his experience of being a psychologist and also he was with me in my time in Costa Rica, being in the medicine space, nature quest, all these different experiences that he's had. He's come back home to himself and been able to see his psychosis as one of the most transformative experiences in his life. Uh, we have a movement and embodiment facilitator who's going to really bring us into the body. And so just using all these tools to explore and to somehow not necessarily be able to uh, put words on our experience, but to be able to keep moving our experience, to be able to keep creating from our experience, because I feel like that is what the human experience is about. It's about experiencing and then creating. So how can you open yourself up in a safe, nurturing environment to explore some of the hidden parts of yourself, some of the parts that you don't have time for in your day-to-day -day life? And then how can you come together in a circle of other creatives and just see what wants to be created from that exploration? And I believe that through creativity, through art, through these different mediums, the more that we create from our experiences, the more we integrate them. And the more that we're able to see them as beautiful, no matter what comes up, no matter what happens in our life, if we can create art from it, um, then I feel like we've, yeah, we, we've done what we came here to do. So this retreat, um, we are rescheduling the dates. Uh, it was supposed to be actually this week, but um, I had the feeling that for some reason that didn't want to happen. And then a few weeks later, I found out that my mom was in the hospital. So it's a very divinely orchestrated uh, pause and rescheduling um, but if people want to sign up they can visit my website uh, there's information there about the style of the retreat and they can apply through my website and then once we have the new dates and the new location which has just revealed itself to me <laughs> this last week we'll be sharing some more updates for people to finish their joining process and hopefully we will have you as well sprinkling some magic on this experience and sharing your integration medicine and your energy work and just your yeah the way that you've incorporated plant allies in your life so again trusting in the universe that it wasn't the right time and it wasn't ready yet because i hadn't met you mm -hmm. and um yeah there's there's just more to come there's more magic that wants to be infused yeah and i'm I keep going back to something you said before about leaving your labels at the door. I'm like visualizing getting some sticky labels and <laughs> people yeah. can write on the labels and be like, just leave, have a box, chuck your labels away. <laughs> um, also, you offer one-to-one -one coaching as well, right? Yeah. So at the moment, I offer a three-month coaching container with me and um, I have found that the people who are working for me are in this similar process of asking themselves these questions and kind of in this death and rebirth process where maybe they've been really good at doing one thing, but then they now feel like they need to do another or that there's some sort of new incorporation of their identity that wants to come through. So in this three-month coaching container, we 
kind of go through like those changes and I give you the support and the tools that you need to just be there, to just be that anchor with you in that process, to give it the time that it needs. And at the end of those three months, um, I support people on a rebranding process and in the creation of a new website or website changes or any changes to their online business to reflect the internal changes that they have gone through in that coaching journey with me. Um, that also involves consulting on offerings and just how to create a business business plan that matches your life plan mm -hmm. that really honors that life plan and that soul plan. And, um, outside of that, um, I also do personal readings for people with tarot and astrology. Cause it's just like my favorite thing in the world. Um, so that's also available and yeah, I do website design as well, just as a separate thing. Um, so I'm always open for anyone who wants to work together or just explore. And um, I have a poetry book, which now is, I think I'm, yeah, giving away for free on my website. So if anybody wants to download that or check that out, it's a beautiful labor of love that I wrote when I got my laptop stolen. So I'm so grateful <laughs> that I got my laptop stolen because it forced me to write poetry, which has really been one of my, um, yeah, one of my most healing practices right now in my life. So there's lots to explore if people want to check out my website. It's just alex slash welch.com. And yeah, please feel free to connect and send me a message and I'm here. <laughs> and the same on Instagram. What do you go? What's your handle? Yeah, so it's Alex Cruz, C-R-U-Z, and then Welch, W-E-L-C-H, if anybody wants to find me there. And yeah, I'm always open for for connection. So please like say hello, <laughs> introduce yourself. And I know that everyone is is important and I'm just always looking to make new friends. Yeah. I think the podcast space is really interesting. It can often feel a little bit like we're speaking into a bit of a void. I mean, we're creating alchemy here. We're creating a lot of medicine and then the podcast gets released and you, I, I, I can kind of see the numbers and the, and the listens and, and the views and on YouTube. But something that I think is really special is when you reach out to to the guest or to the host and share with them a nugget of wisdom that you maybe gained for, from our conversation. It really helps us to to stay on track as as medicine people, right? And to just we know that the work is going out there, but but sometimes just getting those little affirmations, those little nudges yeah. are those can really like make our day so yeah holla as <laughs> <laughs> please and yeah I'm so excited to like just see what continues to be weaved from this because it's so much bigger than these conversations and just always like inviting people to like really let's connect like let's connect on that deeper level and bring forth ideas and that's the what you said before in our last call like this mycelium network so I'm I'm always so grateful to see how the more I work with different plants I really attract people who have also worked with those plants so I remember when I saw your profile you were selling these rosemary bundles and I had just like I was walking down the street and this man was like holding a whole thing of rosemary and I was like oh my God, I just need to buy rosemary. And then I came home and I saw your thing and I started making rosemary bundles, but it was like, so it was so interesting. And I started drinking rosemary tea and just how nature and I, I, I find the plants are my, my biggest teachers, but like, they're always weaving us together, just like the mycelium in the soil. And, um, yeah, I'm just so, so grateful, so excited to see what comes from this and just, yeah, just loving everything that you're putting out into the world and happy to be a part of it, happy to support you because it's so needed at this time. Mm, well, thank you. Your your energy just feels like such a gift from the universe for, for me right now. And um, we could we could carry on chatting yeah, yeah. all day <laughs> um and I'm definitely gonna do a part two to this conversation mm. where we get to talk all about plants yeah, and yeah. All about our magical plant <laughs> spirits and how they can help us so for now I am gonna just say a massive thank you the biggest wave of gratitude from my heart to yours and thank you to your to your parents as well I just want to like honor honor your your family honor your lineages because um yeah you are pure magic and thanking them for bringing you through 
in this life. The same. Likewise. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for giving me this invitation um, and yeah, giving me something to look forward to and to be excited about. So thank you, Emma. <laughs> we'll do it again soon. Mm.